Hello, dear members of jury. Is that team exist? My name is Clef Evlakov. Uh, I'm a leader of this team. Uh, my zones of duty are programming and electronics. Uh, hello, I'm Alek Rushkov. I'm a second member of this team. And I'm a programmer and designer. Uh, unlucky, the last uh, member of our team is absent today because of quarantine. Uh, by he will tell about himself by video call. Hello, my name is Andrei, and I am specialized in mechanics and electronics. And now we want to show you our robots. I want to tell you about mechanics in our robots. Our robots have three main levels. First level is for motors, solenoid, and relay. Second level is for main computer, Arduino Mega 2560, and for motor drivers. Third level is for uh, camera Pixie 2. All electrical borders we made by ourselves in Kikard. We tested them and after that we gave them, uh, we gave borders for professional production. I want to show you how it works in, how it works on the light sensor. Right now I want to turn the floor over to Oleg. Hello everyone, today I want to tell some words about our robot's design and what we did to reach our goals. First of all, we decided to use cheap components from wood and plastic during development to reduce the risk of spoilage. When the components pass all tests and suit us, we start to make them from plexiglass. It's a very strong material which helps to decrease the level of damage to our robots during the match. To cut the details, we use a laser CNC. To get the components, we use 3D print. Also, I use a special software for 3D models, which really helps me. The first one is a Fusion 360 on the desk, and the second one is a Cura. The roller for the river is made of two components silicon and silicon hardener. To rotate the roller, we use a brushless motor. We tried a lot of different versions of the dribber, and this one is the most effective. Also, our robots have 21cm in diameter. And the weight of the robot is about 1,700 kilograms. The front part of our robot consists of three parts. Solenoid, dribbler and interrupter. The interrupter is used to detect the situations when ball is caged by dribbler because camera can't see the ball through the dribbler. Uh, the solenoid is used to hit the ball because we need the force to compensate a turkey of dribbler uh, and the dribbler is used to rotate the ball uh, so robot can move in any direction without losing it dribbler consists of two parts a roller made of silicone by ourselves uh, to increase the friction force uh, so it will be harder for enemy robots to intercept the ball and a brushless motor to rotate a roller with high speed. One of the problems we faced was line detecting algorithm. In our previous robot, we had a square disposition of flat sensors, so there were situations when we had a line between two sensors, and sometimes it made our robots to get out of line. So, a new version we decided to make a circle disposition of LED sensors, which helps to avoid accidental situations in game. When a robot first detects line, it remembers the direction which has to be followed until the moment robot won't leave the line, it moves in this direction, even if he is blocked by another robot.
The main algorithm of a robot consists of few parts. At first, robot follows the ball using two different trajectories. A line is used if ball is too far from robot, and if the ball is close to robot, it goes around it. Then, after ball is catched by dribbler, robot moves towards the enemy goal's center. And when the goals are close, robot hits the ball by kicker. Our goalkeeper can easily follow the line and the ball at the same time. If ball is close enough, the goalkeeper will hit the ball and will come back to his zone. Also, if the robot were pushed from the line, it will try to return. By the way, goalkeeper will always try to stay in the middle of the line. 